the upheaval in the investment banking industry continues. Morgan Stanley today, the latest. Uh, Paul Taubman, who uh, ran the, the banking side of the business, M&A, is leaving the firm. Colm Kelleher will take over the entire investment bank. This is kind of a different than we see in the last upheaval. But, uh, yeah, it's very, it's very different. In fact, it's almost the complete opposite of what UBS has done, which is to exit fixed income and put an M&A banker, uh, all sorts of fixed income. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They put an M&A banker in charge. This time they've done the opposite. Colm Keller ran securities uh, trading, then became CFO. Uh, and is now co-president with Taubman. I mean, they've uh, been basically running the bank together. They've been running the bank together. From okay, let's different, have from, from parts, different continents. Different yes. continents there, there, there are rumors they don't get on as well with each other as you might want co-heads to, but they, they've managed to make it work. And, and Kettle has done a pretty good job, actually, of uh, gradually getting market share and fixed income back up to somewhere half decent. I think they were targeting 8.5% of, of the top 10 banks. They're, they're, right. they're, they're pretty much on track for that. The problem that, that they've got, and which is what UBS decided to get out of it, is, is they don't actually have as much flow as the big banks. So that means that although they might be getting a decent amount of revenue, they're not right. actually getting enough necessarily to cover all their costs and get a decent return. Now, you can talk to anyone in the industry and they'll say, look, the big banks do so much. Well, there better. is a question about the capacity issue, right? I mean, whether there's too much of it in the business. Yeah, which but, is I mean, why UBS yeah, kind of part exactly. of the reason why UBS looks Yeah, well, it, so. UBS, of course, they've got higher capital requirements right. in Switzerland. Um, they've never been that great in fixed income trading anyway. So they're concentrating on what they do best, equities and M&A and, and, and foreign exchange. Yeah. Good luck to them. Now, Morgan Stanley traditionally has had some good uh, bright spots in fixed income, commodities especially, but also some... Um, some of the credit trading as well. The problem is, again, it's, it's if, if you're a JP Morgan or Citigroup or Bank of America or even Deutsche Bank, you've got all these other businesses in the right. bank. Lend, you've got lending, you've got um, treasury and securities services, you've got all these businesses. They're looking to kind of piggyback this on the wealth management business, right? Or yeah, some... they're never going to get the same amount of flow coming from all those lending clients and those people saying, we'll park our money with you. Right. That's not quite going to happen. But once Smith Barney is fully integrated uh, with the whole 100% at Morgan Stanley, which yeah. may happen in the next year, who right. knows? Um, they'll have $120 billion of deposits. And what do they do with that? Should they lend? Uh, should they find other ways of coming up with client relationships? And that's one of the things that Keller is probably going to be looking at. What do I do with yeah. all those deposits? Can I use them somehow to get better um, uh, relationships with clients, which we can then use to get even more flow through fixed income? And of course, what this also does is, I mean, it's sort of more similar to what UBS is doing, is they've done away with the co-head structure at yep. that level, which is at that UBS level, put Orchell yeah. in charge, they've put Keller yep. in it. This question constantly comes up, two heads, no heads. I think it, it can work within certain areas, so they've actually put two people in charge of the investment banking side of the right. business. And that's fine. One can cover capital markets and one can cover M&A. It could be regional. It could it's, be and it's fine. Right. Yeah. But on this one, I think what you've got is, because you've got such a capital-intensive business with high costs, fixed income. You think, well, how do we make sure that works properly? Well, we should try and get the entire investment bank to work as well as one functioning unit as possible. And, and frankly, if most of the really revenue to that business, comes from fixed income, why yeah. not give it to the fixed income head if, he, head if he's half decent? And Colm Keller's done a pretty good job over the last few years. So he wins out. The other guy, Paul Talbot, loses. But who knows? You know, in a few years' time, when markets are better, maybe uh, there's time Things to see again. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll leave it there. We'll keep an eye out for the next upheaval in investment banking, and we'll be back with more breaking views tomorrow.